many, many of us. A good evening to all of us for this evening session where we meditate upon praying for the dead. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we humbly entrust our brothers and sisters. In this life, you embrace them with your tender love. Deliver them now from every evil. And bind and bid them eternal rest. The old order has passed away. Welcome them into paradise where there will be no sorrow, no weeping or pain, but fullness of peace and joy with your son and the, and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And that is how we begin this evening's session with our prayer for our diseased brothers and sisters. The prayer has been that into the Lord's hands we humbly entrust our brothers and sisters who when on earth were into his hands. And if they have lived with him, then you know that they will be with him. As in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13 tells us that there are three things that last, faith, hope. There are three things that exist that are important faith, hope, and last. And the greatest of these is love, for love has no end, as God himself is love. Therefore, those that we have known in Christ, even though they die, they shall live. And because of love, we shall always be united in Christ until we meet with him one day in heaven. These are words that we like to console ourselves with not merely console because we know that Jesus Christ declared himself as the resurrection and the life. For Martha and Mary, who were people who supposedly followed Jesus, at the death of Lazarus, everything seemed different. They had lost their way. They had lost even their faith. And Martha declared unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But the Lord says, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha said unto Jesus, yes, Lord, I believe that my brother shall rise on the last day. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. So it is not just about the last day, but it is. Yesterday, yes, uh, Sunday, we are told that G Jesus says, what? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of the dead. Next week, Monday, will be 2nd of November. And 2nd of November, we are going to celebrate, Mother Church calls us to celebrate the commemoration of the all souls, the commemoration of all souls. So this is a day. And because of that, we would like to anticipate it so that our participation in this call of the church will be wholesome, will be complete, will be that which will bring each and every one of us the grace that we desire. All Souls Day is marked on 2nd November, directly after All Saints Day. And it's an opportunity for us to remember. The word remember here is the commemoration, and especially to pray for those who have died and are not yet in heaven. Of course, we know as scripture tells us that it is appointed unto man to die but once. And after that judgment, that scripture does not pass away, even with our understanding of praying for the dead. Indeed, but because before the judgment of the Lord, there is there may be there may be opportunity for some of which we are going to be looking at very well. Otherwise, we will ask ourselves, why do we waste ourselves our time praying for the dead and we have funerals? Of course, funeral celebration as today we know it, is not as the Lord wants it. Most of us have parties. Most of us have money wasting in the name of funerals. What we, what we have taken out is, we, unfortunately, we have taken out the, the waykeeping, the waykeeping. I wish that rather we would have kept the waykeeping and cut down on the money. What do I mean by waykeeping? Waykeeping simply means that you are keeping wake in prayer. I don't mean the waykeeping where people booze, dance, 
and do all kinds of uh, sensual things in the night. Wake keeping is properly like a vigil. It is an all night. It is a time you, when the mortal remains of the person reminds us of that man, you are dust and unto dust you shall return. So to take away wake keeping, just in the name of people abusing it in the name of that is not the right thing but for us christians when there is a day when somebody is dead we keep wake we stay at night we pray for the soul of the person who has died so you may be thinking about it not i don't mean wake keeping bring the body there and then treat the the widow or the widower in harsh manner and things like that i'm talking christian language wake keeping simply means Pray in, pray in. Okay. Also, some souls have died without being fully ready to meet their God. We would learn for that by the time of our death, yes, a person starts moving towards his or her destiny. But we go into that destiny, there is always that purification before one gets to the destiny. Next week, we shall spend time, God willing, to speak on the subject purgatorio. That means the play the place or state of purification the purification so for today spare me the topic on purgatory to next week god willing we shall look at that subject today we are looking at praying for the dead of course the word will feature many times but into details we will do the teaching of purgatory next week as the lord permits us Purgatory is a place, if you like properly, it is a state, not a place. We shall look into that next week where we get cleaned up before entering into the presence of the almighty God. Just like the saints in heaven pray for us on earth. Somebody has asked, how do you know that the saints in heaven pray for those on earth? If you read from Revelation chapter 8, Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 following up to 5, we are told that when heaven was open, the angels were given a lot of incense and they put it, they put fire into the incense and the sense, and they offered prayers. They offered prayers for all of us. Well, so the saints and the, the saints and the angels in heaven pray, worship God, and pray for us who are on earth. So the prayers and the masses we offer are of help to the souls in purgatory, so that they may also pray for us one day or ask God to release them into his beatific vision. Okay. All Souls Day is what still we are dealing with. It comes right after All Saints Day. The month of, the month of November begins with All Saints Day and ends with the theme of the All Souls Day. So November, as we know, is dedicated to the dead. To pray for the dead is the main purpose of all, all Souls Day. That is what we do. During All Souls Day, we pray for the dead. We pray for the dead in Christ. We pray for the dead in Christ. Those who have died in Christ and have a hope of the resurrection. We pray for the dead because we know in faith three important truths. Three important truths are necessary for us. Number one, first, contrary to the popular heresy that presumes that everyone who dies goes to a better place. Of course, we wish everybody a better place, but it is not everybody who goes to a better place. Catholic faith does not believe everyone who dies goes to heaven, especially immediately. Those who have died not in Christ start moving towards the place where it is called, the, the, that is hell. There are four things that are necessary that for us. There's, uh, I, I, that is necessary for us always also to know. It is death, judgment, heaven, and hell. These are things that all of us, the four last things, everybody must know and think about them. Death, judgment, heaven, or hell. These are very, very important for us. So do not think that, well, having had a very good funeral or having had a very nice, many of us, sadly, sadly, and sadly, I say, we are looking for big, big, big welfare packages. I am sad that somebody is selling for me 
a, a, an insurance policy or some other types of policy. And he says, Father, will you like to do insurance so that during the funeral? And I'm like, wow, I am here on earth. You're not even thinking about, I want to save money to take care of the sick, the poor, the aged, and the, and then, and the, but what, what is it? If I am dead, I am dead. You understand? When we are dead, we are dead and we are only going to our father and prayers will help us, not the kind of funeral that we have. So to have a big, you no, know, people are having big, big, big time investment for, well, I guess we should be talking about this. Bring it up. Let's talk about it. This whole thing about funeral insurance and things like that, is it really necessary when you don't even have the same kind of insurance to take care of the sick brethren that you have? Well, let us consider that. I am just challenging us. Bring it up and let's talk about it. The second, the dead may need our help. The dead may need our help in prayer. We shall be looking at it very soon. Is it okay to pray for those who have died? Well, we shall look at that very, very soon. And the third is that our prayers and sacrifice can in fact help them. So one, we have seen that yes, they need our prayers. Two, indeed our prayers can be helped. Our, those who have died can be helped by our prayers. Hence, we pray for them especially those in purgatory, that they may enter into heaven. Next week, when we deal with purgatory, we'll get to know its purpose or what it is, what it's all about, purgatory. Okay. History of All Souls Days. There is a monk or the abbot called Odilio who lived in the abbot of Cluny in France in the year 998, 998. It was he who began to set aside specific days for the remembering, remembering to pray for the dead who are in purgatory. As, as, as late as a thousand years after Christ, this became something that was being practiced. Then soon it became a church practice. It became a church practice. This feast as the local feast in his monasteries gradually spread throughout the Catholic church towards the end of the 10th century. And by that time, a lot, every, every place, it became a practice to pray for the dead, especially on the 2nd of November. During All Souls Day, the priest may be vested in black. That is if the focus is just praying and mourning for the dead. He can also wear violet, where we are reminded that man, you are dust and unto dust you shall return. The priest on all souls, they may also wear white in the hope of the resurrection. Each one of these is permissible for the priest to wear on the all souls day. I think that while the priest is also giving the chance to wear this, I would recommend to us, if you are also going to church, it is not an obligation, neither is it a law or anything. But will you consider putting on a dress to church that symbolizes either that you are mourning or penance or resurrection. These are the three types of things. So even your dressing must speak what you believe. So next week by today, which will be also All Souls Day, you will be going to church and you must go to church. For us Christians, when we have a commemoration, the biggest thing that we could do is to have the celebration of the Eucharist, the Mass. And going for the Mass, Whilst the priest may wear black, violet, or white, you can also wear any of these colors to be able to do what? To put yourself just like what? In, in either in a state of mourning, in a state of what? Remembering your penance, or in a state of what? Hope in the resurrection. Hope in the resurrection to come. November, November. November is a time of the dead. The church remembers the faithful departed, not just on all souls days, but throughout the entire month in, of November in a special way. Therefore, in all churches, in all rectories, and even in your homes, when we enter into the month of November, remember, month of November shall be dedicated to the dead. So the way you decorate your homes and the way we decorate our churches must reflect that we are setting this time for praying for the dead. Because traditionally, we know that liturgically, we know that 
the liturgical year is coming to the end. And when the liturgical year is coming to the end, as the as catechism teaches us, there are four last things that each and every one of us must focus on. One, death. Two, judgment. Three, heaven. Four, hell. Three of these are going to happen to each and every one of us. Choose, you cannot choose it per se, but by your life, the Lord will give you one of them, okay? In November, we often attend the graves. We attend the graves of our loved ones who have died and pray for them. Well, typically for those of us who are coming from this part of Africa, Ghana, you know very well that our graveyards are not the finest of places where people would want to go. Yet it's about time that we, 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 we change our mind. The graveyard or the cemetery from the word comatorio is a place where the dead lie in sleep, not in, not, they are not dead. The dead in Christ lie in sleep waiting for their resurrection. So that to go to the cemetery and be afraid is a symbol of one who has no faith in the resurrection. It is sad that so many of us believe and have a, seriously that cemeteries are the place where the dead body, where people, where that's the only, if dead bodies really can harm us, even in your homes, they will visit you. They, don't, they will not live in, just live in the cemetery, but the cemetery is only the place which has been dedicated for us to remember the dead. So on 2nd November, if you can, make a visit to the cemetery. Well, you may tell me, Father, these are cemeteries there, they are not nice. So, well, don't worry. If it is not nice, when you and I, we die, we will go there. So if you don't go there now, we don't worry. This time will come, we will be there. So I will take the lead and go and prepare the place for you. Even before I die, I, start, I will go there on 2nd November at my own time, in my own private time, just to go and pray for all of us. Because I know many of us will say, I am afraid, I am this and I am that. Well, in Akan, they say, when you come we see when you baby now. If you are really not feeling sleepy, you can claim that you don't know where to sleep. But I tell you, when you have lost loved ones, going to the cemetery does not become a difficult thing for you. There are people when they go to cemetery and they are now mourning, they can even be rolling on the tombs because they are forgotten that they are what? They've forgotten that, hey, these are the people that I used to be afraid of, oh, but because they are mourning. Yes, because at that time you are mourning, so you don't fear anything. But that's what's happening. We can light a candle in a church for our loved ones. Please, during the month of November, try to visit the Blessed Sacrament or go to the church. Make sure that you have lighted a candle. You have lighted a candle for one or two of your diseased members of your family. Everybody has somebody who has died in his or her family. So you need to light a candle. Lighting of candle is nothing but a symbol of the continuation of our prayers. So as you light the candle, it simply means that you also believe in the resurrection and you are asking the saints the, and the angels in heaven to join your prayers, to pray that God may have a merciful judgment on those of our brethren our parents, our family who have died, okay. We can think about happy times we spend with our loved ones and thank God for them. Thank God for memories, thank God for good memories. Thank God for good memories, okay. Now again, we may have a mass offered for the intentions of the holy souls. Did you know that you need to pray about it now? You need to start thinking. You, need to, you don't need to sit down. Many of us don't even know that I have to offer mass for my dead relatives. Maybe we don't know. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you, nobody has told you. But these are the things that we do. We offer masses for all, our dead, for all our dead relatives. So please, start making your list and start making and start planning. Another thing too that you could do is to have a remembrance tree set up in your church. If you don't have a remembrance tree, you can have just a, a place, a plaque or thing where you can keep the pictures of those who have died and in your church or in your home. You can put memorial cards on them of the relatives who have passed away. All these are to help us that remember man that you are dust and unto dust you shall return. 
it is sad when men forget about the about the dead. When they forget about the four last things, death becomes a threat, a challenge unto us. But remember, man, that you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. This is how we begin the year in February, most of the time when we are on Ash Wednesday. And once we are in the last month, last but one month, we are reminded of death, death again, my dear brethren. Prayer, what are some of the prayers, common prayers for the holy souls? This is the commonest one, eternal rest prayer. How do we pray it? Eternal rest, I think you can just be repeating after me. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, and may everlasting light shine on them. May they rest in peace. Say amen. I know you just said amen. You may continue the prayer and say, may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Let the believers say amen. I believe these prayers because eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. You know that man has no rest. Man has no rest on earth. So one day there shall come where we shall rest. My friends, if this is the case, it means that when, they, when, you, when, you, when people die, they are simply resting. They are simply resting. You know, Jesus gave up his spirit. The true theology is that in Christ, we do not die like dead animals, but we die and have life. This is our faith. When people, don't, when people who don't know their faith think that death means that everything is finished, as in the Akan, they say, Owo ye. for some people. But for us who believe, I say, Owo ye fie ye. Owo emma jidye ejina. Owo ebiye nipa eni. Midye, owo ensei mi fie. Owo ne mami ti nyami 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 sumasi. The death of my mother, especially, was the time when my eyes were open and I understood really what life means. So, owo die ensei fie for me. Maybe it would wolf here and never say, maybe it is your home that death will destroy. But for me, death is life. And once it comes, it comes. Jesus says, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Death comes now and I'm going home. So I fear no death. What about the prayer of St. Gertrude the Great? St. Gertrude the Great. Pray with me in the spirit right now. I know you cannot. You have been muted. So everybody pray with me. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy, of thy divine son, Jesus. In union with the masses set throughout the whole world. For all the souls in purgatory. For sinners everywhere. For, for sinners in the universal church, for those in my, my own home and within my family. Amen. Oh, my dear brethren, shout wherever you are, say amen. I believe that in November, those, of our, 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 those who have gone ahead of us, marked with the sign of faith, shall rejoice in heaven that we that they have left behind are celebrating their memory, not with cries and tears. For even St. Paul still told us that when you mourn, do not mourn as people who do not have hope. For us, we have hope. So we pray even for the dead because we know that one day we shall be united with God, our Father in heaven. Why do we pray for the dead? Why do we pray for the dead? This is where we'll be ending. Let us take some few scripture to be able to help us. The Bible clearly teaches the rightness of prayers for the dead. In 2 Maccabees chapter 12, verse 40, verse 42, verse 44 to 45. Verse 40, verse 2 Maccabees chapter 12, verse 40, verse 42, verse 44, and then to 45. Unfortunately, some of us, even those of us who know this and have this in our Bibles have never read it or don't know about it. Well, I guess it's about time for us to study. It's about time for us to study and know. Okay, so now, 
this is what happened. This is why this is the 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 Then under the tunic of every, you know, there is the Maccabean story that we find in Maccabees. It's a long story. I believe we know about it. We can find time to talk about it at the appropriate time. The soldiers had died and they were wondering why some of them had died like that. Then under the tunic of every, every one of the dead, they found sacred tokens of the idols of Jamnia which the law forbids Jewish to wear. And it became clear to all that this was why this man had fallen. And the people turned to prayer, beseeching that the sins which had been committed might be wholly blotted out. For if, this is the part that is very interesting. He says, Maccabees says, for if, we were not expecting that those who had fallen would rise again. It would have been superfluous and foolish to pray for the dead. So we pray for the dead because we believe that they will rise again. Those who, they will rise again because they are only sleeping. The dead in Christ, these are the people that they believe for us in Christ. These were, at that time, Christ had not come. Then he says, he made atonement for the dead that they might be delivered from their sins. St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 29, teaches that otherwise, why do people mean, what do people mean by being baptized on behalf of the dead? If the dead after death have no hope, why would somebody be baptized on their behalf? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized on their behalf? If we cannot do anything, if we cannot do anything for the dead, how do you get baptized for the dead? If you want to ask me, I will tell you, go and ask St. Paul. But you see, the truth is that praying for the dead who have died in Christ is a hope that is fundamental, is a hope that is fundamental. Okay, again, this indicates that, this indicates prayer and fasting for the dead. And I repeat, the dead who have died in Christ, if you die and you are not in Christ, not much can be done for you. And since we do not know those who, are, those who really are in Christ and are not in Christ, we continue to pray for all of them just like Christ said to the, in the story of the wheat and tares, let them grow so that on the last day, God will separate the good from the evil. In the same way, we pray as Christians for all the dead so that those who are in Christ, will, it will benefit them. Then somebody will say, but if we are praying for the dead who are going into hell, what benefit of it is? You see, you have never known that any good that is sown in Christ never goes waste. So and a prayer that has been offered never goes waste. You are thinking in the sense of what? In sense of, of because the prayers are worship. And if you have worshiped God for these, who knows? You see, but I tell you, if a person is destined for hell, there's not much that can be done for the person. And God is, has a way of turning the it's like telling me that somebody, God has said this person will die and the person will surely die. Is it necessary for me to pray for the person? Yes, I continue to pray for the person, even whether the person will die or not. Same way, even if the person is destined for hell, we shall pray for them and that prayer will benefit other people and for other purpose. The word baptism often symbolically refers to penance. So being, you see, so is the St. Paul talking about baptized for the dead. He's talking about doing penance, praying, fasting for people who have died. If you want to see the word baptism symbolically refers to doing penance, as in Mark chapter 10, verse 38 to 39, or Luke chapter 3, verse 16 
or Luke chapter 12, chapter 12 verse 15. The Apostle Paul also appears to be praying for the dead. One Onesiphorus. Onesiphorus in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16 and 18. Listen to St. Paul pray. Well, you may make your own judgment. But for me, I know and I see that he is praying for Onesiphorus who most likely was dead. This is the prayer of St. Paul, or this is what he says. He says, may the Lord show mercy. He says, may the Lord show mercy on the household of Onesiphorus because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day, indicating most likely that he was already dead. You know very well how many times he helped me in Ephesus. History tells us that Onesiphorus most likely had died, had died. And Paul believed that God will have mercy on him on that day. I can also pray for those who have died that God may have mercy upon them. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine on them. May the souls of the faithful departed and the souls of and the souls of our dearly beloved through the mercy of God rest in perfect peace. Amen. That's not all. In Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 12, verse 32, Jesus says that whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Please listen. You will not be forgiven in this age or in the age to come. Is there an age to come where there will be forgiveness of sins? Your guess is right, just good as mine. This is scripture for you to be able to analyze yourself, okay? Implying that the type of sins, you know that in 1 John chapter 5, verse 16, St. Paul tells, uh, John tells us that there are two kinds of sins or levels of sins, if you like. He says, if you see a brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sins does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. Therefore, if there are people who have died and have mortal sins with them, we can pray with them such that they will have life in eternal. Continuing the tradition of the faithful Jewish people, the church has therefore prayed for people to be purified of their venial sins. Praying for the dead is holy. Praying for the dead is holy. Now I want to address the subject because when Holy, when All Souls Day falls on a Sunday, Sunday by its nature is a day where we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. And All Souls Day is where we pray for those who are in purification. Therefore, when All Souls Day falls on a Sunday, it is always shifted to the Monday after. It always shifted to the Monday after so that we can celebrate. It can be celebrated on, if you like, so that the Sunday becomes a mini All Saints Day. And then the Monday becomes what? The All Souls Day. Because every Sunday is All Saints Day. All, because it talks about the resurrection. That is the reason. Okay. So now, my dear friends, I want you to join me in faith. I want you to join me in faith right now. I know each and every one of us has got a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, an uncle, or somebody who is dead. Pray with me right now. Prayer for a diseased friend, brother, or sister. I commend you, my dear Will you mention the name of your dead relative? To Almighty God. And entrust you to your creator. 
may you rest in the arms of the Lord who formed you from the dust of the earth. May Holy Mary, the angels, and all the saints welcome you now that you have gone forth from this life. May Christ, who was crucified for you, bring you freedom and peace. May Christ, who died for you, admit you into the garden of paradise. May Christ, the true shepherd, embrace you as one of his flock. For you who have died in Christ, may he forgive all your sins and set you among those he has chosen. May you see your redeemer face to face and enjoy the vision of God forever and ever. And let the people of God shout wherever you are and say, amen. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, this is where we come to today. And we allow ourselves, if you have questions, if you have contribution, you would want to bring it up and help us so that from now onwards, we will begin from preparing ourselves for the All Saints Day and All Souls Day, All Souls Day. Somebody asked the question, how many years or how long do we pray for the dead? It's like asking, how many years, how long do we pray for a Christian brother? That is not a question, you know, it's how do you, how, how do you ask? You pray for them as long as you are praying for them. We are praying for the dead. You pray for Christians. Prayer does not end. We continue to pray because usually in our churches, we are asked to bring pictures for the dead in the year. As long as you still remember them, why wouldn't you pray for them? So if you prayed last year, doesn't mean you cannot pray this year. I seem to say that the last year's prayer is enough to take them for the whole year. I'm sure when you have even had your funeral, after the 40 days, you still have something. After one year, you still have something. You see, because memory is always there, we keep praying for the dead. Does it mean after one year, Either, your, either the prayers are not enough. Oh, no. Prayers uh, is just like food. You eat and it's just like somebody asked me today, uh, why do we pray the rosary? Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. Does it mean that Mary is deaf and does not hear? Well, we just took a good laugh after that. And I said, that's not the purpose. So, okay. Do I have a question? Do I have somebody who has a contribution? If you have a contribution or you have a question, you may please unmute yourself and then you can ask your question. Pardon, Angelina. Yes, please. Uh, what is the purpose of uh, lighting light for our bereaved family? The candle. The candle and the flowers. Okay. Candles are symbol, symbols of Christ himself. And when you light candles, it's a, it is the continuation of your prayers. And as the candles like flowers, when they are there, they burn out. They are a symbol that life is always, life, human life is always diminishing. It's always diminishing. So we keep lighting the candles and lighten the candles all the time. So if you light the candle in church, it is a continuation of your prayers. If you put a flower there, it is also the same thing. If you would, those of those who or those who live in Europe, when there is an accident, you see that the first thing that people will do is to go and put their candles, flowers, and stay there and pray, just to be able to say that this is a spot where we remember 
our dear, dearly beloved who departed from us. So lighting candles, flowers are all symbols of what? Of prayers, yes. We have Fidel. Fidel is Bani. Okay. Please, I'm listening to you. So okay. far, I don't have any questions to ask. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Good. Now, we also have, uh, I read that. I also, uh, somebody says, I read that All Souls was celebrated around Easter. Why was it moved to November? Because November is a time where we get to the end of the year, the end of the year when we, we remember, end of the year, we remember the dead. Can our prayers for the dead, can our prayers for the dead be termed as prayers for salvation? When we deal with purgatory, you would understand it better because those that we are praying for are not people who are not in Christ or the, those that our prayers benefit are those that are already in Christ and it benefits them for them to have the beatific vision with Christ. Okay, good. And the next one. Bafo. Bafo, yes. But I mean, I tell you, I brought a brofo missionaries in our home, my sofa no home. Now, I mean, I'm not telling you, 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 I didn't think I'd be the judge of my young family. Yes, Sika Penny, I we share a Roman funny method is for a C. Yenin in Ara. Ya tun ton ton toning in Ara, the Yaja Ayan, the Chesia, and the Ayan of Bassa Bassa. But maybe a method is for a C. Yawa, maybe a Roman for a C. Yawa, say, I'm sorry, dear. I outmoon said, I'm why I'm sorry, I outmoon says, Tilano, a Omudi Honi, but a Musa says, or more, a tun ton will be a Bahubidi and a Natchez be a assay. Yes. Inti Aya. Meet <laughs> Cause one sum one sum no, say. Inti no one ebe sum. Inti yeni na di di. Inti chere say no. Eni na yebe yebe bompa ezenka. Inpe yufo ebe ti. Enang ke yomu say ni yeye ye no M Y Y. Cause oh honey na honey yeko yo. Okay. Yo. Miss me das. Yo Janet, amu ako hini please. Um, do you think praying for a, a dead person helps? to propel the person onto heaven if, let's say, in, in, uh, the person was a horrible person. Let's, okay. let's leave it there. Okay, yes. Do you understand? Yeah, very well, very well. Okay. Now, All right. I did say that next week we are going to be talking about purgatory. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, so we're going, I just distinguish purgatory. Who are those who go to purgatory and who are those? I know typically that uh, some of us as Catholics will say that, uh, well, uh, typical, we say, say maybe the inyashi may not have been crampo and qua. Now, a friend is saying, Pegatri, the American, the mina or what? Okay, so next week we we take our time to look at Pegatri, and your question will be properly answered. But what I want to say is that if a person lived a horrible life and say in the mind of God the person is destined for hell, no amount of prayer, nobody, no church teaching says that. Our prayers will move somebody from hell to go, start going to hell, uh, to heaven. No way. That does not happen. Why answer you, please? 
Yes, Father. Thanks. And now, what is the beautiful thing is that all the prayers that I had I had offered for the dead in general will benefit all those who are there. Okay. So if I have been praying for say uh, somebody a for uh, I've been offering prayers, offering prayers for the dead, and say that person I am praying for is not destined to go to heaven that prayers are not in vain because they are offered in the name of God and they will benefit souls in purgatory. Okay, thank you. Did I see any other hand up? Now, Father it says, please, Father, would the prayers for non-Catholics work since they didn't believe in the prayers for the dead whilst alive? Father, will the prayers for non-Catholics work? Uh, I don't seem to understand. Are you trying to say that if a person was not Catholic and the person has died and I pray for the person, will the person go to heaven? If that is the answer, now you have to distinguish. If the person is destined for heaven, and a person is destined for heaven, that means that a person is going through purgatory. Yes, it doesn't matter whether uh, they are Catholics or they are not Catholics. You see, it is your relationship with Christ at the end of the day that will merit you salvation, not, so to speak, which church you belong. Even though, as we speak, the fullness of the, fullness of the revelation of God subsists in the Catholic church, meaning that or by, by extension, all those Methodists, Anglican, and even all those who are into all the Pentecostal, Charismatic, and even other religions, they, by extension, are all Catholic. You use the word Catholic, and Catholic simply means universal. So I don't know one who does not belong to it by extension. Okay. Now, somebody says, should we observe a fast on All Souls Day, why not? You can and we should because we are praying for the dead. Remember, it is a day of penance. Remember, you see, there are three important things. You can, you, you can wear black. That means you are, you are what? You are mourning. You can wear purple. That means it is a day of penance. Or you can wear white because it is a day of what? Of uh, the, the hope in the resurrection. So each and every one, each one of these should propel you in the kind of spirituality that you are going to adopt on that day. Okay, good. Is there any other question, please? So somebody is asking, so we don't have to wear black. I'm saying that the priest can wear black, violet, or white. So I am saying, yes, you can wear black, white, or violet. Yes, my dear friends, is there anybody coming up? Do we have a question? You can always unmute yourself and bring your question. This is a time where we would love to. Next week, we will spend the time talking about purgatory. Purgatory, what is it? Okay. How it relates to the topic for the day, purgatory, okay. Is there any other question? Angelina. Angelina, please do. Father, is obligation to go to the cemetery to pray? Obligation is not, it's not an obligation. It is advisable if you can. Okay. So as you are not, it, that, it means that if you don't go there, you have not sinned. Okay. Thank okay. You. But if you can go there, the better because that is the place where you'll be reminded properly of the nothingness of man. Yeah. 
do ti fi a un muse ni pan se fi uko hospital na obe obe ti asie yi na uko hospital na uko kolebu na uko e fenesis e kolebu motria na ya kase ni pan se fi na obe muse eh ampa ni pan se fi ampa u nti ano ni asem no nti thank you thank you thank you too My dear brothers and sisters, do we have any other more questions? I'd want to thank each and every one of us for our time. And uh, we want to pray that as we have prayed today for our diseased brothers and sisters, this last week of our rosary month will also be dedicated for our diseased brothers and sisters. For all who have died in our faith, remember that the Hail Mary is a prayer for even those of us who are alive up to the time of our death. Let us pray with Mother Mary now and at the hour of our death that we may lead holy lives. For ourselves, for that we may be able to lead holy lives, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Mother of God, pray for us in Amen. Amen. Grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, full of grace, Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, in the beginning, the beginning now, now, and ever shall be, and ever shall be, without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord keep you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord. Thanks be to God.